We're back. This is Dave Vellante, and this is SiliconANGLE's live production of the VTUG Winter Warmer. We're here at Gillette Stadium, home of the New England Patriots. Ken Wee is here, along with Cody Bunch. These gentlemen are with uh, Rackspace. Uh, they, can, they can geek out deeply if, if you like. Uh, you can tweet me questions if you want, or we can uh, talk about industry trends. But gentlemen, <coughs> welcome to theCUBE. Hey, thanks, Dave. So you guys were doing uh, a keynote this morning. I was bopping in and out. There was, they, they, they call them keynotes, but they're really not keynotes. You know, yeah. they, they start the day and they separate you out, so you had to sort of run around. I got my morning workout in. But, uh, <laughs> but Ken, why don't we start with you? Maybe sure. you can summarize what you guys talked about in the, in the keynote and what the reaction was from the audience. Sure, I, I think uh, the focus of our keynote is basically to talk with current VMware administrators who are curious about what OpenStack is. They've heard a lot about it. They've heard things about it potentially being an alternative to VMware or a partner to VMware, but they're not sure what it is. So our keynote was really to say, here's what OpenStack is, and if you're a VMware admin, here's what you need to know about OpenStack to make that transition, to, to either using OpenStack instead or using OpenStack alongside of VMware. So we'll get into some of that, but mm -hmm. I mean, there's a perception out there. There was, Certainly there was initially a perception uh, within the community that, oh, here's VMware, they're going to come in, and maybe throw a wrench in it yep. and, and, and fork OpenStack, and VMware said, no, 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 here's the NICERA code and software-defined right. networking, which is you know, kind of a no-brainer for them to do that, to try to get adoption up. Um, you know, some of the core code, obviously, they're not going to give to OpenStack. So this is sort of an right. interesting dynamic. Uh, in your view, my question is, in your view, are practitioners even aware of all the dynamics that are going on there? Is that just like inside baseball and politics that is just noise, or is that a real concern in the, in the community, the purity of, of OpenStack. Yeah, so I mean, Cody, you talk to our community a lot, so you, so you can probably share some you of that. Want to take that one? Yeah. Well, or so do you not want to touch that with a 10-foot pole? <laughs> I, it's, it's a mixed answer, um, being that it, my work at Rackspace, I've touched on our partner program, uh, and you know, like there is a need for enterprise vendors or the, the, the non-pure kind of uh, stuff into OpenStack to give it the more robust, the more enterprise grade type features. Um, the flip side of that is, yes, there's some contention that comes in anytime you have a, uh, a VMware or an EMC or some of the, the quote unquote old guard uh, sniffing around an open source project, so. Well, okay, but, but do you feel, um, well, let me, let me ask you, Ken, uh, is op OpenStack ready for prime time? I mean, it's been you know, written yes, it's been written no. What, what's the state of, of OpenStack? Um, I'm sure you get that question a lot. Yeah, a lot. I would say OpenStack is ready for prime time. Um, I would caveat that by saying uh, there are, if you want something that runs out of the box completely and you, know, you don't have to do anything around it, um, OpenStack's probably not quite there yet. I would argue VMware is not quite there either. I was going to say, either, is, is, right? well, who is there? Um, so uh, one of the things I, I often talk about with customers is differentiate between what we call OpenStack the project and then the products that are built using the OpenStack project code. So uh, the project itself it's, it can be a bit raw and it's not doesn't necessarily have all the pieces today that you would want in a full deployment. But a lot of vendors like Rackspace we work for but also like Red Hat and even some extent VMware are starting to package things Take that, take that raw project open source code, and, and they are productizing it and wrapping things, other tools around it to make it more production ready. So that last point, you know, the, one yeah. of the points you made about, you know, you'd argue maybe VMware is not ready for, for uh, out of the box either. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to make this about OpenStack sure. versus VMware. Yep. We can maybe talk about that, maybe not. But my, my point is, we're talking here about building so-called clouds, right? Yeah. And we can sort of all agree that the, the, the paradigm put forth by a Amazon Web Services mm -hmm. of, of cloud and self-service and pay as you go and, and granular services and, and automation, all that stuff that we generally, generally think about as cloud is really the objective, right? right? Now, I would, I would totally agree that you can't just go buy off the shelf VMware and have mm -hmm. that up and running. You can't even do that with Amazon. Okay. I mean, I know from experience, we run our crowd chat platform on, on Amazon. It took you know, a couple months at least of elapsed time sure. to get ready to go, so, so, okay, so that's that's cool. But but there are differences, right? I mean, in terms of, of maturity. I mean, you know, VMware's been around a long time. Yes. So, the idea, if I understand it, is the community's going to bring those capabilities in. You've right. got people doing, you know, block storage. You've got people yeah. doing networking and so forth. And so, so is that pace of contribution picking up? Are you getting that, you know, a virtuous cycle effect? Is that in place now, or is there a lot? 
So again, longer to go. I don't know what you think, but I, I, I see it. I see um, it has more a, and more contributions yeah. coming all the time. If, if you look through the keynote slides from the last several summits and the number of contributors from various areas and so on, and the amount of contributions in terms of lines of code and quality, they've gone up for every OpenStack release so far. Um, and then I, you know, I look for Icehouse to be rather outstanding in that regard. Yeah. Okay, so so can you give us a little more detail on, on, on Icehouse, like what, what to expect and I I mean at a high level? I wish I could. <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, well, I don't have a great answer yeah, for you there. I I'm mean sorry. a couple of I think one to keep an eye on. So I, if you look at the way OpenStack was, there was a lot it was very and it still isn't just large extent developer driven. In yeah, terms sure. Of contribution. A lot of momentum in yeah. the developer community. But right? well also in terms of like who is involved in contributing to OpenStack. Uh, work, and a lot of times individual developers. What you're seeing more and more are kind of established companies who know about operationalizing a data center, like folks like Red Hat, IBM, Rackspace, who are now contributing more and more code. And I think you're gonna, what you're going to see as a result is people saying, hey, you know, for the past 20 years, <laughs> this is what we learned about how to operationalize infrastructure. Let's take that and, and put that into code and built that into OpenStack. So one of the things you want to look for in, triple, uh, in Icehouse is a project called Triple O, which is called um, OpenStack on OpenStack. That's where the Triple O comes from. And it's basically a uh, set of uh, features that allow you to more easily deploy and to manage the, the platform itself. So you, those types of contributions you see, you're, getting, you're seeing more and more from these established vendors who know about, how to, uh, know about operations. Now, Cody, you wrote the cookbook <laughs> right on OpenStack, the the OpenStack Cloud. Cookbook. I was one of two authors. I sort of forced Kevin into the update. Okay. So, <laughs> so, so what are the ingredients? Maybe we start there and 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 and. So the know. the a uh, lot of patience, a little a uh, little Linux admin knowledge, and then build from there. Um, yeah. Uh, ingredients in what context, though? Like uh, ingredients to make the book, ingredients to make an OpenStack? Yeah, the ingredients to make an OpenStack in um, the cloud. So OpenStack is a set of loosely coupled projects, and so you, you pick and choose what you want to deploy in your cloud or so, or if you're deploying from a, uh, an established, uh, so where Ken draws the line, uh, uh, OpenStack the project versus OpenStack the product. So uh, certain vendors have an opinionated way of deploying OpenStack. Uh, you may take Keystone and deploy it in a certain way. You may take Nova and deploy it with a certain hypervisor underneath. Uh, VMware's VOVA is actually uh, VMware's opinionated take on OpenStack, which uses ESXi and vSphere under the hood, whereas uh, the, the Rackspace approach uses uh, either Ubuntu or CentOS and KVM under the hood. So I think the key there for me, and having read the book, is a great book, by the way, if you want to learn OpenStack. It's, it's the key to me there, it's the focus on automation. Uh, the idea, and this is you know, applicable to not just yeah. kind of the, the, the operators, but the, the, man, the directors and managers. Uh, what we're trying to get across with OpenStack and cloud computing is that it's the only <coughs> way to scale out IT these days is to automate the process. And I think his, uh, Cody's book kind of, that's the large part of that focus. Let's automate. Let's automate deploying OpenStack and automate, and then bring automation into OpenStack itself and the way you deploy applications. So I want to talk about that, but so yeah. just a plug for the book. So it's op the OpenStack Cloud Cookbook. Cloud yes. Computing Cookbook, right? OpenStack, OpenStack Cloud, Cloud Computing, Computing Cookbook. Cookbook. And it's Cody Bunch et al.? Uh, it's Cody Bunch and Kevin Jackson. Okay. Now you talk about automation, Ken. Uh, I was in an, uh, one of the sessions I was in this morning. The, the question from the practitioner was, the vendor community is in here pushing automation, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure I, I want to go there. I was somewhat surprised to, to hear that in this right. world of cloud and, and you know, AWS and OpenStack, hyperscale where these organizations are highly automated. Right. It seems like you can't scale your business without, without being automated. Right. My question is, is are, the, are the practitioners ready? Yeah, I, I, so I, my personal take on this, I, I think sometimes we, s we don't do a good job in the vendor community of selling what automation is about, right? I think uh, sometimes I talk to people and they think automation means uh, you, you basically want to take away my job, <laughs> right. right? And that's not <laughs> what automation is. What autom the way I think about automation is it's taking a repeated, repeated process and simplifying it and making it basically error free. And, and the, 
and the reason for that is not because you want to replace jobs, but because every business says, you know what, I want to bet the farm on X number of projects, right? In the old days before it was automation, because I, I needed, uh, every step had to be done manually, I, can, I could only do 10 projects a year. And if you know, four of them generated revenue, I had a great year. If I could automate that process to make it simpler and faster, now I can do 50 projects in the same amount of time using the same amount of resources. And, and the now, risk for each one of these yeah. little bets is much less. Right. Now if 10 of those projects succeed in making revenue, I've, my percentage of success is lower, but my total revenue intake is, the, is much greater for the same amount of expenditure. So that message is going to resonate great with, certainly with a business audience. Yep. And I would think, you know, any, any CIO, forward thinking or not, yes. um, I would think the CFO would love that message. Yep. But, but it's surprising to me in, in my senses it hasn't trickled down to the practitioner level. And that maybe, maybe, maybe we're not doing a good enough job in the cube, <laughs> maybe the vendor community, right. as you said. Uh, but there still seems to be that, that resistance. But I feel like we're almost at this tipping point where yeah. it's inevitable because you're not going to be able to scale your business you know, without that level of, of automation. Is that, is that a fair assertion? That, that sounds about right. So um, we were at reInvent. I want to bring Amazon sure. Web Services into the discussion because they're sort of the, 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 the mental model now for, sure. for the cloud that everybody's sort of chasing. And, and, so, and they've been very forceful now in the last year or so with their marketing. We were at reInvent and Jerry Chen had just come back from Hong Kong. Oh, okay. And uh, we said, Jerry, give us the summarization of Hong Kong. How would you compare it to AWS? And I thought he had a great line. I wonder if you guys could comment. He said, <laughs> OpenStack, I feel like, is, is everything to everybody. Mm -hmm. All things to all people. Whereas Amazon, he said, is trying to be one thing to all people. Do you right. think that's a fair assertion? And you know, what does that mean to you? That's a good, I mean, I, That's the first time I'm hearing that. I'm yeah. going to need a second or two to process. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was the first time I had heard it too. And I said, okay, well, all things to all people. That means, well, it's got a big community. Everybody's participating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. Yes. That means it's going to be uh, applied. It means a huge TAM. Yeah. It's going to be applied in a lot of places. It's going to solve a lot of uh, solve a lot of problems. But it also means it's going to take longer. Potentially, to, yeah. to bake this yeah. cake. Yeah. I mean, I think. Whereas Amazon is yeah. like, okay, here's the nail, boom. So again, you know, I, 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 I would AWS is the hammer. Yeah, I would caution and say, I don't know, I don't know. If comparing AWS to the OpenStack project, it's the best comparison. Yeah, because, because it's apples and oranges, right? right? Because one's. Yeah. I think it's more apt to, it's, it's more applicable to compare, let's say, AWS to the, for example, the Rackspace public cloud, because that is OpenStack, but it's the productization of the OpenStack project, right? So, as a project, yes, we we can be all things to all people, but as you when you productize, as Kobe, Cody mentioned, it's that's a vendor's very opinionated view <laughs> of what what pieces or what elements of that project. It uh, should be in the product itself. Then, in that sense, we are becoming w one thing to all people. That, that and I think that's very helpful because my my in analysis was somewhat superficial. So yeah. now, so now thinking about the the outcomes mm -hmm. of the OpenStack products that are being developed, I think the vision is that these will be interoperable. Is that is that correct? If you follow some kind of cookbook, is that yeah, is that correct? Um, these so clouds there, will actually yeah. interoperate. There are several projects underway within the community to establish what that baseline is, to establish uh, what running an OpenStack core is and what core represents, um, and then to you know like in order to say that you are running a public OpenStack, you have to meet certain compatibility requirements. So, and yeah. that is that is because it is a community-driven set of projects. All of that is still being defined as we speak. Right, and I think one thing to keep in mind too is. Even as all these various OpenStack-based products come out, um, the, core, the code itself doesn't change. Right? That's one of the agreements we have within the found well, the main foundation is I'm taking the OpenStack code, I'm not changing that code uh, unless I'm contributing it back, right? Uh, what's different is a vendor may say, I'm going to use this deployment tool, right, Chef versus Puppet, yeah. or they may say, I'm going to use this monitoring tool or this billing tool to enhance what the core project can uh, bring to the table. But at the end of the day, the, since the co underlying code itself is the same, if I'm running a compute on one OpenStack cloud, 
that same um, compute resource should be able to run on another OpenStack cloud because the code for that is the same. So portions of the products and the clouds will be interoperable and potentially right. if right. the companies adhere very strictly to the definition, right. it'll be interoperable. Do you feel like that's critical for, for adoption and uptake and, 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 and market penetration? That, that, that interoperable vision is met or is that not so important? Um, I, I, I think it's hugely important. Yeah. Um, it's, especially when you, when you talk about, you know, like uh, OpenStack as a project and as separate individual prod products, you, we need better words for that because those are a little <laughs> tongue twisty. Um, and fighting a, not fighting, but uh, living in the same world as an AWS who's already gigantic and has become the de facto standard. Um, interoperability even between the two. Uh, so OpenStack has an AWS com set of compatibility things. Um, it's going to be essential for survival of either or, right? So and I would agree uh, because I mean, certainly that was VMware's strategy for a while mm -hmm. when they were trying to push the sort of homogeneity of VMware across, mm -hmm. uh, you know, private and, and public into the hybrids. But but I think that like, I think we can agree that strategy didn't work. And and part of that was it wasn't going to work anyway. But then OpenStack comes along and says, mm -hmm. oh, that's a better approach. Right. Open source is is a much much better approach. And then you have Amazon, which is as you say, they're already I don't know three four billion dollars in, in AWS revenue this year, so they become the de facto standard, and they move very fast. So, but the but the enterprise is looking for an alternative. Everybody, every market, even ketchup has alternatives, right? So you yeah, need, yeah, need yeah. you need multiple choices. Choice without choice, there's no innovation. So yeah. so it seems like that interoperability piece is is, is critical and and expands the TAM. Um, yeah. I want to ask you guys about the Randy the Randy bias question, right? He <laughs> came out and said. You know, OpenStack community should should adopt the AWS API. Um, a lot of people said, yeah, that's good, golf clap. Others said, well, wait a minute, then it's basically Amazon driving right. the direction. Uh, I, I, I presume you guys fall into the latter camp. Is that is that fair, or do you say, hey, let the community decide? There's, well, so being that OpenStack is a community-driven project, if the community has enough interest in it, then it will come to be, right? There will be the code contributions to back that up. Mm -hmm. Um, yep, that's right. There, there's always going to be value in some level of compatibility between the two. Um, like if you don't have a basic set of uh, provisioning APIs that are compatible or so across the two, you won't have the ability to experiment with workloads in the public cloud and migrate them in or vice versa, right? You, or, or it makes the development of tooling that is multi-cloud aware uh, much more complex. Yeah, yeah, so I, that's good. I would suspect then ultimately it's going to happen. My last question is leadership. Um, my partner John Furry said, you know, OpenStack needs leadership. I mean, you got Rackspace, you got Dell, you got right. IBM now coming in in a big way. You got HP coming in. Many, you know, many, many, many others. You know, VMware, but I don't see VMware be, as being the leader. Is is that fair? Does is, does there need to emerge a singular leader of of, of OpenStack, or are there enough big you know, hefty cooks in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know, <laughs> I think we're early. So some of the things that o the OpenStack Foundation is doing in terms of how they run the project, it's it's fairly new, even for learning. the open source world. Okay. So I think we're, we're learning. Uh, you know, one of the things I always talk about comparing OpenStack with Linux is, one of the differences, Linux was basically running f without any <laughs> vendor involvement for 10 years. Right. Right, and then when it started getting gaining traction, that's when the vendors came in. Obviously, OpenStack's different because the vendors are in almost from the beginning. So we're kind of in some new territory in that sense. Um, I think I don't know. I don't necessarily think we need a single leader. Um, I think what we need are leaders who are good at um, uh, managing collaborate or bringing about collaboration. Right? Who I think. I think what we need are leaders. On the vendor side, we need people who can say, yeah, I'm, I'm in it not only because I want to push my interest in my company, certainly they're free to do that and they should, yeah. but that we also want to help drive the adoption of OpenStack, the project. And as I think if we can do that, then we can kind of get around some of these. Well, things. certainly you guys, you know, basically handing yeah. you know, control to the back to the community was mm -hmm. a huge move mm -hmm. um, in the early stages. 
you got some tailwinds, right? I mean, IBM has a great track record mm -hmm. in, in open source. HP, you know, very open company yeah. in, in, in general. So there's a lot of real juice behind OpenStax. We're, we're huge fans, obviously. We were at the OpenStax Summit in Portland. Yeah. We plan to be uh, at, at Atlanta if we can get the invite. So if you've got any <laughs> uh, influence in the community, we'd appreciate that. But uh, okay. gentlemen, thanks very much, uh, uh, Cody and Ken, for coming on theCUBE. Yeah, and thanks, uh, and good luck with the project, and, and we'll be watching. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank keep you. it right there, everybody. We'll be right back. This is theCUBE. We're at the VTUG Winter Warmer live from Gillette Stadium. We'll be right back. <laughs>